It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. RocklandWorldRadio.com Welcome to Dialogues with Dan, heard on Rockland World Radio every Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to check out the archives for past exciting programs located off the menu bar. Now the host of Dialogues with Dan, Mr. Dan Windheim. Thanks, Richard. Hi, everyone. This is Dan, and we have a live interview for all of you. I'm back to live guests. I'm speaking with Daniel Melito from Long Island, New York, and Daniel's going to speak about rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, hi, Dan. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, sure thing. Glad you could make the trek from Long Island. Yes, of course. Maybe we could start by you, Dan, telling us about your background and a little about your situation. Sure. Um, I'm 37 years old. I have rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I have diagnosed when I was 11 years old, but I got sick when I was 9 years old. So for about uh, 28 years now, I've uh, suffered with uh, the, this disease. Um, it's It's been hard. I mean... Uh, Right now I have uh, four joint replacements. I have to get one redone. I have a fifth on the schedule. Um, and really my whole life I've just been dealing with, with this chronic illness. And uh, I've recently decided to use that to help you know, bring awareness to the masses. And what is rheumatoid arthritis? Well, it's, uh, as I said, it's an autoimmune disease. Uh, what happens is your body for some reason, they're not exactly sure. Uh, your body uh, decides that your joints are just as dangerous as any other foreign uh, antibody or, or foreign substance, and they attack the cartilage and the bones inside the joint, and they just deteriorate over time until they literally disintegrate. Yes, and you had said you were diagnosed when you were 10? 11. 11. But I got sick when I was 9. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so it's been a lifelong challenge. Yes, definitely. Yeah, but I understand your views of life aren't halted by this arthritis that you have, uh, you think, outside the box. Well, I try to. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. There's, there was a lot of times when I went through some pretty, pretty dark days um, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's normal when you live with disease for this long. Uh, it just gets overwhelming at times. But um, I don't know. I guess, I guess one day I just came upon the epiphany and I just said to myself, uh, you know, if you just sit there and you just stew in your own, you know, misery, then what's the point? You know, like I'm not going to be able to change my lot in life by doing that. So I decided to go positive instead, and then a couple of years ago, I started writing. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I, I see you're, you're quite um, prolific <laughs> at writing. You've written two books? Um, one, but I'm working on a second. Oh, you are? Yes. Uh, well, isn't one of them is not about arthritis, or it's a story about arthritis, but it's not about you per se. Well, it's, uh, I have, uh, I've, I've, well, I've written for Creaky Joints, which is a website that actually, well, actually started right here in Nyack. Um, uh, I've been really writing for them for about four years, a blog every other week. Um, and that was the genesis of, of the book, So Young. But then I also have, I also try to do fiction as well. Yes, that's I'm, what I'm right. referring to. And I'm putting together, actually, it's, it's a story, uh, you know, it, it's, I don't want to say that's, that it's based on someone with a disability, because it's not. I don't necessarily give away the whole plot line, but I'll say that sure. it's, it's, it definitely flips the whole 
uh, being disabled on on his head, and sort of makes it into a makes it into an asset rather than rather than a uh, liability. Oh, excellent! So I, I hope to have that out within a year or so. Fantastic. Uh, yes. So, Dan, maybe you. Well, I guess you've you've encaps you've talked about the strength to endure that. It's better than looking at the glass half full right. that you looked at it. Okay, this is it, and what what can I do? Yeah, and you're doing. Well, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah, it's it's it it gets difficult, and that's actually believe it or not, the whole. If if you had told me six or seven years ago that I was going to be writing, I would have said. You're crazy. I didn't even like writing when I was in elementary school, but uh, about five years ago, I was uh, I was taking a lot of uh, prednisone, which is a steroid, you know, and that has very bad side effects. It bloats you. It it, it makes uh, it it uh, sorry it gives you osteoporosis. Yes. A lot of bad things, and uh, on top of that, I actually also developed high blood pressure. So between the blood pressure medicine, the high amounts of prednisone, I was a mess. And, uh, and, and I always sort of prided myself on being able to weather anything that, that came at me and, exactly. and you know, be strong. You know, and people always kind of looked at me and were like, oh, he's so, he's so strong. And so I felt like I had to be, but this was just overwhelming. And I sat down one day and I said, people always say, writing sort of helps you deal with it. Oh, yes. And I sat down and then 30 pages later, I had the beginning of a book, so. Oh, it was, uh, that's great. Yeah, it was, it was born of, you know, trying to deal with, deal with the disease in a different way. Excellent. Have you been able to write for maybe on the internet, maybe for different, like there are a lot of magazines like you said, creaky joints. Right. Did you write articles for their magazines? I, I actually write, uh, besides creaky joints, I write for uh, the Huffington Post, which is uh, a large uh, website I'm sure a lot of people have heard of. Um, I'm actually, I've dealt with uh, the Arthritis Today magazine. I dealt with them and, uh, you know, hopefully be doing something with them. And I've even spoke to uh, uh, a magazine in uh, Great Britain to maybe do something with them. But uh, there is there is also a, just a, a huge community on the web that that is doing the same thing I am, and trying yes. to get the word out about arthritis. And and I have a lot of I've met a lot of pe great people in that arena, and I try to we try to help each other as yeah. much as possible. You know. Oh uh, yeah, it's a constant yeah you know effort, and it's there's always something new yeah so you're constantly reinventing yourself exactly and i try to like uh like for christmas one year i wrote a a, a christmas story about arthritis and uh i've written poems before as you know i well you uh, you've written poems too i oh, saw on your website yes so you know what that's like just just to give it you know something fresh a fresh angle most definitely yeah have you had time to meet other survivors or people dealing with different situations? I have, I have not as much as I'd like, I'll be honest with you. But I have, uh, you know, as I'm sure you know, arthritis is not, it's not a disease that really lends itself to being mobile. So I, I've, I've talked to a lot of people over the phone and I've done, you know, Skype, that sort of thing. But as for actually meeting people, the only time I can really say that is we, uh, actually me and my fiance, Allison, we were asked to speak at a uh, arthritis conference that we went to St. Louis for oh, about uh, relationships. Yes, son. I'd like to mention that Allison is here this evening. <laughs> Hi, Allison. Hi. <laughs> yes, she was a nice young woman. You're very lucky. Thank you. And she's you. lucky as yes, well. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. So as far as support groups, have you been to many? I, when I was younger, I, yes. I, 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 
I went to a lot through the Arthritis Foundation sure. in my area. Um, and that, that helped me to meet uh, a lot of the people there. But, um, you know, to be honest with you, Dan, it just came, to, I, didn't, I wasn't able to drive at that point yet. I was too young. And it just became, you know, with everything else and, you know, dealing with school and the extra work and, and having to deal with all, you know, uh, all the consequences of having arthritis and being in school, it just got to the point where it was a, uh, just one more thing that was just too too difficult to 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 go to. So I, I do keep yes. in touch with some of them, but I haven't gone lately, I'll be honest with you. Oh, yes. Yeah, do you find that, all right, you start going to a support group and you're okay and everyone talks about hi I'm Dan and I have arthritis <laughs> or I have TBI right and it's okay but it gets old yeah it's like everyone you hear the same thing over and over so after maybe a year or so you said okay enough of this yeah it's true Move it's on. true and, and, and it's not to diminish the, the groups at all. Exactly. But, but you're right. And then you hear the same thing over and over, and you're like, you know, they're great people, but how many times do yeah. you want to hear the same thing exactly. that, that you're going through over and over again? You know how it is. Yes. But did you think that, all right, these groups could really benefit from your book? So young. By the way, how could people... Find out about So Young. Oh, uh, the book, you can actually go to uh, www.soyoungbook.com. Very easy. Uh, and that'll take you right to the page uh, about the book and, uh, you know, how to get a hold of it, how to check it out. Uh, I think there's a link that even has a sample about it that you can, uh, that you can read. And, uh, you know, that, that's a good point. We're actually, we're in the process, me and Allison, of trying to get into a couple of groups and maybe even at the hospitals to try to talk about the book and share it with people who who might you know benefit from reading about it. Yeah, I really recommend. I think that's, get, you get so much back by sharing with people in similar situations. Yeah, yeah it is, and I'll tell you, there's nothing like, uh, well I'm sure you've, you've gotten it before, there's nothing like getting an email from somebody that just says, I'm so glad to hear about someone that's going through the exact exactly. same thing. I never thought anybody, you know, had the same thoughts as I did. Yes, exactly. Have you actually learned anything from these email contacts? Sure. I, uh, I, uh, to be honest, one of the most striking things that I, that I didn't realize when I was younger is, I have, I have three or four really good friends, and and. Ever since, even when I was young, 12, 13 years old, they never treated me any differently. And if I needed help or I needed, you know, they needed to take me home, they would do so. But what I've learned is when I've written about, you know, having good friends like that, that seems not to be the case always. Uh, there's people out there with autoimmune disease who apparently, they, it's hard for them to make friends that understand someone who's ill like that. Oh, exactly. Yeah, maybe you could share some of your, like, the things in your life that make life difficult. You had mentioned to me your ankle and about how Medication. it's getting worse and you had the operation and it's getting worse. Maybe you could speak about that. Sure. Um... As I said about a year and a half ago, I uh, uh, I had my ankle replaced. Uh, it was it was pretty bad because it's it's basically curling under under my my right my right leg, and uh, the doctor put the implant in, and it's about a year recovery. It, it, it's pretty serious, and now I'm finding out that it was really worthless because the implant was put in crooked, and now I have to go through it all again. And not only that. They're going to take the implant out and they're going to fuse my ankle, which means the bone is just going to be set together so that it grows together and the ankle will never bend again. And that's, well, at the very least, that's frustrating. Frustrating yeah. I have to learn to go through that again. And, and it was probably the most painful operation I've ever had. 
So that's frustrating, as I said. And uh, I also mentioned the medications. I'm on a lot of pain medications. Oh, yeah, maybe you could discuss the difficulty getting the meds and keeping the meds sure. accurate and actually flowing. Yeah. The meds flowing. Well, see, I'm, I'm on a lot of pain, pain meds, uh, narcotics, because at this point, that's about all they have that can help me. And it does help me. It does give me a quality of life that I'm able to enjoy. Like, I, you know, without them, I would never have been able to get here today to, to be able to, to share this time with you. But unfortunately, it, it's getting a lot difficult. It's getting a lot more difficult to get these medications. Um, and, you know, I, I understand that there's a, a huge problem with prescription uh, drug abuse. Right. But uh, right now, it just seems like no one's listening to people like me who have to take these medications to, to enjoy a quality of life. And they just keep making more laws and more stipulations that are making it just impossible to get these medications sometimes. We had to drive into Manhattan one time simply to fill one prescription. And we live on Long Island, so that's like a, an hour trip both ways. Yeah, do you have any solutions or ideas? Maybe what could be done? I think, honestly, what I think needs to be done right now is that, one, you know, like right now, if you go into a pharmacy and you hand in uh, a prescription for any narcotics, you're immediately going to be uh, uh, not, not denied, but they're immediately going to scrutinize it to the point where it might make it too difficult for you to even get it from that pharmacy. Like, I had to get a letter from my doctor that says that I, I was taking that medicine, even though that's exactly what a prescription is. A letter from your doctor yes. saying that you can take it. Um, I had to get certified by the actual pharmacy. It's just, it's, I think that what they need to do is simplify the process, you know? Simplify the process that the yes. people who need it can get it. On a different note, mm -hmm. do you think maybe would medical marijuana possibly help? That's a good question. You know what, I've been posed that question before. Um, I, I, from what I've been told, a lot of people with rheumatoid arthritis seem to, seem to be able, seem to get help from medical marijuana. But for me personally, uh, well, let's just say if I tried it, I could tell you that uh, when I did, it made my, uh, it really it actually hurt, hurt my joints more than it helped, oh. to be honest. So not for me personally, but from what I hear, there's a lot more people out there who are the opposite for me, and who it does help. Yes. And, I, and to be honest, if it helps them, I don't see much of a downside, I'll be honest with you. Yes, and they're working on getting it legalized yeah, I saw that. here in New York. I saw that might be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, maybe you could speak about family. How has family helped or hurt or been part of your life with this sure. situation? I I can say without reservation I wouldn't be here today without without family. The support structure that they provide me is invaluable. I mean, my mother, throughout my whole childhood, she was the one who was there, every doctor, every procedure, every uh, operation. Uh, my brothers, my brothers, sometimes they would have to carry me up and down the stairs. You know, uh, my, my sister as well, always there to help me out. I, I wouldn't, I put it this way, they've helped me so much that uh, until I met Allison, uh, I didn't even have plans really to move out from my mother's house because I needed that help that they provided. It, it's it's invaluable. It really is invaluable to have a support structure like that in place. Yes. Do you think though that it might have been too good? <laughs> that they might have been too much of a crutch? Uh, the, yes. Yes, yes. And, and, and I love you guys, no, yeah. No, yeah. no offense to you guys, I love you, please don't take this the wrong way, but just of my own, my own thoughts, I think that there's probably at least a few times where uh, there's things that I probably could have done that I was maybe convinced that I, that I couldn't. And, yes. you know, I'm not going to cry over the past, but yeah, I think there might have been a few times. Sure. And... 
how, well, you mentioned Allison. Say before Allison, have you had other girlfriends over your lifetime? Sure, sure. I've actually, when I was younger, when I was in my teenage years, I kind of overcompensated for having the disease by, by, I guess, by being, you know, more romantically inclined, you know, trying to go out with as many girls as possible. Uh, and now I look back on it and I think it's, it was more of an attempt to maybe convince myself of how normal that I was, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I did that and I have to say, it's hard to find someone who really truly understands what it's like to be with somebody who's chronically ill. Right. And how about strangers? How do strangers react toward you or not react? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, la I'm laughing because I, uh, I, I talk about this a lot, actually. It's, it's, I, you, know, you know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm sure. When you go into a store or you go in anywhere, really, and someone sees you limping or someone sees you uh, with a cane or something, they kind of do that with thing where, you know, I'm not. I'm, I'm not looking at you, but I really. I, I really am. I, I want to yeah. see what's wrong with him. Yes. <laughs> and they. And they think we don't notice. You know what yeah. I mean. <laughs> so did you get angry? When uh, you were young, younger. Yeah, I. I did at first. You, you know, a lot. What really gets me angry a lot of times, even today, is when, you know, I'll. Some days are worse than others. You know, right. obviously, some days yes. I can almost walk normally, and some days it's really bad. If I have a good day and I get out of my uh, my car in the handicap spot, you know, you'll get people who will say things to you like, what, what are you doing? You're not handicapped. And you want to be like, "Yeah, that, you know, that's none of your business. Yeah. What, dude, are you crazy? Exactly. You know, so that did that still gets me angry when I do that today. Yes, that's so right. So you've been able to make peace with this. But this... Well, or did it come the last my five years, or when you were young, or was it a gradual, gradual process of making peace? Or I, did you say earlier you had an aha moment? Um, you know, that's a good. That's a good question. I never really considered it. Uh, I would say probably. It kind of just got to the point where, uh, yeah, when I was younger, everything was, I was like, you know, but uh, I think, yeah, I think you get to a point in your life where you kind of have, maybe not an aha moment, but, you know, definitely a, a time when you just realize that there's certain things that matter and the other things that don't really matter, do you really have time to, you know, especially people like us, do we really have time to worry about that stuff oh. on, on a regular basis? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Exactly. So I think it happened probably more of like an aha when you get to a certain age. Yes. And when you get there, that's such a relief, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you think of all those years <laughs> yeah. you were breaking windows and barriers. <laughs> and why? Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, okay. And life is life. I can float. Exactly. I'm floating. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly right. It is a relief when you get there. Yeah. What a great thing. Mm. I'm glad you reached it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Me too. I'm glad I didn't know you those <laughs> early years. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> we could have had some yeah. bad Sometimes. times. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, Dan, maybe, well, we've spoken about this. All right, what makes you angry? Let's see. What makes me angry? Probably right now what makes me angry uh, the most, uh, well, we spoke about the medications, getting the medications. That definitely makes me angry. But really what's making me angry the most right now, as I said, is, you know, and I talk about having to get the ankle redone. But even, even... Uh, you know, broader than that. To me, that only really signifies that, to be honest, I'm angry most with myself. 
because I got lazy. Damn, I got lazy. I forgot that just because a doctor tells you something, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's gospel, that that's yes. the truth. And I got lazy. I didn't want to go for a second opinion. And I should have gone for a second opinion on my ankle. And I didn't. So I'm mad at myself the most because I got lazy. You know, you don't want to make an appointment and go and see another doctor. So right now I'm frustrated with that, but I'm, I'm most angry with myself for, for forgetting that rule. Yes. And what gives you satisfaction hmm. besides Alice? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, honestly, now, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I can't believe I lived without doing all this, the writing and the blogging and the talking yes. to people. This is really what I get up and look forward to. Mm. You know, yeah, you know exactly what I mean, I'm sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that I gives do. me the ability to really put everything else in perspective. Yes, you know? exactly. Did you ever think, you know, Martin, Martin Luther King Jr., mm? you know, how he made things better for, you know, right. black and right. the four... Civil rights, right. Yes. Did you ever think that you and me were making things better for, well, me, brain injured survivors, sure. and you, you know, women sure. with arthritis. Of course, I, I always, I always wished we had someone like uh, Dr. King to, to kind of hold up, oh. you know, and say, here's the face yes. of arthritis, or here's the face of TBI, but that never seems to happen for, for, for conditions like ours, you know? Oh. So, but I want to, I'm trying to work towards that as you yes. are, so. Well, some years ago, I was given the Martin Luther King Award really? for a local agency, and I was given a plaque, and... Congratulations. Yeah, That's thanks. That's great. That's and, wonderful. And I guess I feel my life is... I'm, I'm Martin Luther King. Not him, right? But right, I know. <laughs> in my own upset. arena. Yeah, in your own arena. And you could be. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So you could fight prejudice. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we try to. I mean, I try to fight. Really, that's why I named the book so young. Yes. Because that's what they always say to me. I have arthritis. Oh, but you're so young. Yeah, exactly. That's part of fighting the whole misinformation about oh, it. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, many years ago, I wrote a poem called What They Don't Know. Mm. And the last line is, no, don't, do not fault other people for what they don't know. That's a good line. Teach them, and then they will. That's a good line. Yes, it so is. it's up to us to teach citizens and yeah. strangers, hey buddy, you know, you don't understand. Right. This is what I'm dealing with. It's and true. The learning, you know. Yeah, I'll tell you, the best compliment I got on the book so far is that someone said to me, the first thing they said was, yeah, I, I didn't even read that. When they read like the first ten pages, and they said, "You know, I didn't, I didn't realize that kids got arthritis." When they said that, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> exactly what I'm trying to do." Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe you could short, shortly read a small part of the book. Sure. Would that be alright? Yeah, definitely. Maybe do you have a, maybe the intro? Yeah. Let me, uh, let me put up Like here. a few paragraphs? Yeah, definitely. I'll read a little bit here. Um, okay, okay. Let's see. Um, let me find a good... Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Here we go. This is a good passage. Uh, People often ask me what it's like to wake up with the pain I feel every day. After years of hearing that question and lacking an acceptable answer, I came up with one. What I tell them now is that if they woke up tomorrow with the pain I wake up with every day, they would likely not get out of bed for a month. <clears throat> uh, and so the human body 
It has a very interesting way of dealing with pain. Like if you burn yourself, it will hurt. And at first, but then when your body gets used to the pain, the discomfort begins to subside. And your body, you know, acclimates to the trauma. And the pain becomes less and less. And then what happens is, that's exactly what happens with arthritis and living in, with pain every day. So even though I'm fully aware that I'm in pain, because I wake up with it every day, you know, it becomes bearable. And that's, that's, that actually applies to a lot of the things. Oh, with excellent. So that's, you know, you words. know how it is. Thank you. Oh, very well put. Yeah, in our last few minutes, maybe you could talk about other people living with RA. Sure. Like what do peop other people you know, sure. what do they deal with? Well, I have, uh, actually, it's funny, I, I have a friend uh, uh, who I just, uh, who just interviewed me, uh, Lainey Anderson. She actually writes uh, uh, a blog called The Seated View. Uh, if anybody's interested, it's uh, theseatedview.blogspot.com. And she's actually in a wheelchair, but she's had RA for even longer than I have. And uh, she's, as I said, she's in a wheelchair, so she, she has it worse worse than probably I'll ever have it. And, and, and you'd think that that would affect her. But yes. she's, she's just as uh, gregarious, just as uh, compassionate, or even more so than I am. I mean, I, I, I envy her. And she's, she's, she's even more active in the community than I am, really. I mean, she's got a million things going. Yeah, so. I'm glad you, yeah, maybe you could share. Sure. Share these websites Some of the resources? Yeah. and resources. Sure. Well, we have, uh, you know, as I said, soyoungbook.com. That's, that's my website. Uh, but the website that I blog for, Creaky Joints, I actually just found out uh, our Facebook page, uh, which is facebook.com slash creaky joints. We're now the largest arthritis community on the Internet. Yeah, nice. I didn't even realize. Um, and as I said, it was started right here in Nyack. Uh, um, I don't know if you've heard of him, Seth Ginsberg, Louis Tharp. They run a charity called the Global Healthy Living Foundation. Oh, I don't. Well, they're right here in Nyack. Oh, and they started yeah. Creaky Joints, and it's been, it's for all autoimmune diseases. Um, you know, other than that, there's the official arthritis foundation and stuff. Yes. But really, if you want to get a sense of the disease best, you go to sites like Creaky Joints and my website for the personal you know, touch. Excellent. Thanks. Sure. Yes. We have, what, two minutes left? Oh, I was going to ask about DZ, DZ Stone. Yeah. But you had said that's... That's actually a, a friend of mine, Donna, the one who, who put me on to you guys. It actually is a separate person. Oh, <laughs> It's yes. not an alias of mine. No. <laughs> But if you were to make an alias, what would it be? <laughs> it's a good question. You know what I thought about that? I thought it was actually going to, I think I might actually use a pen name for my fiction. And I was going to use, I was probably going to use my middle name, Peter, and uh, just call myself uh, uh, Peter Miller. Oh. <laughs> Who knows? Yes. You never know, Dan. Yes, so, so we spoke about a lot today. Yeah. In definitely. 30 minutes. I know. It seems it went so fast. Oh, it, it did. It, it goes so fast. Yes. So one last time. Sure. You could mention the name of the book, where it's like are any stores carry Yes. This? Uh, it's, uh, you can actually get it on uh, iBooks, uh, the Nook, uh, the Amazon Kindle, and even on Google Books. Or uh, if you go to soyoungbook.com, you can order this soft cover version. And you can even go to your local bookstore and they can order it for you. Oh, and didn't you say that there's a, what, a digital version? Yeah, all, well, the digital version you can get through the website, So Young Book. Yeah. And you can really get it in any format that you want it digitally. Yes. So, and there's even a sample, as I said, so you could check it out. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Well, Daniel Molito, I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're Please, welcome. Please, it was a pleasure. I'm glad you made this trip. Sure. And so am I. Great to learn about all the good stuff going on. And I know it's not easy. Well, you know better than anyone.
but we'll keep at it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, everyone, thanks for joining us on Dialogues with Dan. Have a good night. Peace. Welcome to the new sound of Rockland. RocklandWorldRadio.com. Exciting online TV and radio. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? Welcome, Welcome to the new sound of Rockland. 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 WorldRadio.com. Rockland. Exciting, Exciting online TV and radio. radio. Watch and listen to what you've been missing. Broadcasting independent music, art, and culture. From the world of pop to poetry, classical to cutting edge. Movies, comedy, jazz, jams, rock and roll baby, interviews, information, and event listings. Join, join the revolution. It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. RocklandWorldRadio.com